Good morning. Welcome to this morning prayer service on Thursday, the 30th of April. This is the third Sunday after Easter. Delighted you could be with us. I'm Jack Gabing. And I'm, and I'm Steve Regan. Glad to be here. Let's take a moment and collect ourselves uh, as we enter into this time of worship. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. So we have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O oh most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen indeed. Oh, come, let us adore him. Today's psalm is Psalm 144. We'll read that responsively. I'll take the first half of the verse, breaking at the asterisk with you responding. Blessed be the Lord, my strength. Who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My hope and my fortress, my stronghold and deliverer, my defender in whom I trust. Who subdues the peoples under me. O Lord, what is man that you have shown such respect to him? Or the son of man that you so regard him? Man is like a thing of naught. His time passes away like a shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth your lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and consume them. Send down your hand from above. Deliver me and take me out of the great waters from the hand of strangers. Whose mouth talks of vain things. And whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song unto the Lord, O God. And sing praises unto you upon a ten-stringed lute. You have given victory to kings. And have delivered David your servant from the peril of the sword. Save me and deliver me from the hand of strangers. 
whose mouth talks of vain things, and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. That our sons may grow up as young plants. And that our daughters may be as the polished corners of the temple. That our storehouses may be full and plenteous with all manner of grain. That our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields. That our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no decay. No leading into captivity and no outcry in our streets. Happy are the people of whom this is so. Indeed, blessed are the people who have the Lord for their God. Glory, Glory to the to Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Job, beginning with the 29th chapter, the first verse. And Job again took up his discourse and said, Oh, that I were as in the months of old, as in the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone upon my head, and by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in my prime, when the friendship of God was upon my tent, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were all around me, when my steps were washed with butter, and the rock poured out from me streams of oil, when I went out to the gate of the city, when I prepared my seat in the square, the young men saw me and withdrew, and the aged rose and stood. The princes refrained from talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The voice of the nobles was hushed, and their tongue stuck to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard, it called me blessed, and when the eye saw, it approved, because I delivered the poor who cried for help, and the fatherless who had none to help them. The blessing of him who was about to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I was a father to the needy, and I searched out the cause of him whom I did not know. I broke the fangs of the unrighteous and made him drop his prey from his teeth. Then I thought, I shall die in my nest and I shall multiply my days as the sand. My roots spread out to the waters with the dew all night on my branches. My glory fresh with me and my bow ever new in my hand. Men listened to me and waited and I kept silence for my counsel. After I spoke, they did not speak again and my word dropped upon them. They waited for me as for rain, and they opened their mouths as for the spring rain. I smiled on them when they had no confidence, and the light of my face they did not cast down. I chose their way and sat as chief, and I lived like a king among his troops, like one who comforts mourners. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response, Say the song of Moses, the Cantemus Domino. Say that in unison. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. The Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand, and the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. You brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them 
in and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever, forever and forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our second reading comes from the Epistle of St. James, beginning with the third chapter, the third verse. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a fire, and the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth came, come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought to not be so. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pan pond yield fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As a young man, my, um, I noted that my grandmother, my Irish grandmother had a quip for everything. There was. It was never uh, a moment that she didn't have a witticism to share. So when I would speak uh, sometimes with unsavory language or um, I would double speak or even tell a fib, she'd look at me and say, and you eat with that mouth? Be careful you don't poison yourself, kid. James would agree with my grandmother. Um, <laughs> because the chapter that we read today is all about the way we use our mouth. And, uh, you know, be careful we don't poison ourselves. Um, some have suggested that James is a whole bunch of proverbs. It doesn't have a binding um, theme that runs all the way through, but I would beg to differ. What I think James is really about is testing. He starts with count it all joy when you're being tested because testing your faith produces endurance and that's how you know what it is. He goes on to talk about uh, how, how our obedience is tested. And then he goes on to say how true religion is tested by caring for widows and orphans and how brotherly love is tested by not playing favoritism and how um, our good deeds are tested. Our faith is tested in good deeds 
And in today's chapter, chapter three, it's really about testing our integrity, um, that, that it's by the mouth, it's by the use of the mouth, you can tell someone's integrity because uh, what they do is um, not always going the same direction as what they say. But why is it such a big deal that, that we would be mindful of what we say, that we would watch our words? Well, here's at least three quick things that come to me. First off, um, words are really potent. I mean, how did God create the world? He spoke it into being. So when our words are going two different directions, we're actually jumbling up creation. We're not, we're not living in integrity. We're not going in the same direction as God who spoke blessing, who spoke life into being. We're not really living into what it is to be made in the image of God and filled with his spirit. Number two, uh, when our words don't bear up with our actions, um, we're actually violating one of the big 10 commandments, which is don't bear false witness. I mean, how do we have a trust in society? If folks tell us one thing, they tell us that the ingredients of this medicine is thus and such, meanwhile, it's poison. How else are we gonna be able to trust uh, around us unless it's all going the same direction? And of course, third is that um, God spoke his eternal word the word incarnate out of his very bosom, out into being. God is speaking so that we would know who he is, that who his very essence is. He didn't send a text message. He didn't send a voice message. He sent a son that if you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus, true to his word. And his word is gracious and loving. Words are really, really powerful. I mean, the things we say can build up and heal or could damage and destroy. A lot of psychologists have made money over the years predicated on that. Our words are powerful. One of the things I really love um, is, uh, is in going out of the country, I love to travel and I've lived out, outside the country probably for a total of maybe eight years or so of my life. But I find when I'm out of the country, I'm more inclined to listen and less inclined to speak because I might just step in it. And that's what James is telling us in the first chapter. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. James is calling us out saying, look, listen, use your, your ears and your mouth in proportion, as my grandmother used to say. Um, so we slow down because we want to reflect the goodness and love and the grace of God uh, and not be so quick to speak. As my grandmother also used to say, um, I'm not so inclined to believe what people say, but what they do. Let's show what we do um, and then make our words line up because out of the mouth, the overflow of the heart speaks. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Let's affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Close your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, you gave your only Son to be for us, both a sacrifice for sin and an example of godly living. Give us grace, thankfully, to receive his inestimable benefits and daily to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and have sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mighty God, who in your wrath sent a plague upon your own people in the wilderness, for the obstinate rebellion against Moses and Aaron. And also in the time of King David sent a plague of pestilence, which killed 70,000, but remembering your mercy spared the rest. Have mercy upon us miserable sinners who now are visited with great sickness and mortality. And in the same way that you then accepted an atonement and commanded the destroying angel to cease from punishing, so may it now please you to withdraw from us this plague and grievous sickness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, send down upon those who hold public office, especially those working to stop the spread of coronavirus, the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose, they may faithfully serve in their office to promote the well-being of all people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to take a moment in silence now to bring before the Lord anyone uh, on your heart and all those uh, who care for others. Hear these our prayers, Lord, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day.